Welcome to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Uh, I'm Luigi Fontana, the scientific director of Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic. Today we're going to talk about cancer. A new paper published in uh, April 2024 using global, global CAN data estimates that by 2050 the annual number of cancer diagnoses will reach 35 million. A 77, yes, a 77 percent increase from 2022. Lung cancer, the most common cancer in 2022, accounted for 2.5 million, uh, that is 12.4 percent of the 20 million new cases and caused. 18.6% uh, of the 9.7 million cancer deaths worldwide. As you know, smoking is the leading and preventable cause of lung cancer. Even if air pollution, there is accumulating evidence that air pollution, indoor and outdoor, uh, plays an increased role in, uh, in, in lung cancer. Indeed, lung cancer was the most frequently diagnosed cancer and the leading cause of cancer deaths in men, in men. While breast cancer held these positions for women. The Lancet Breast Cancer Commission published on April 15, 2024 predicts that by 2040 global annual breast cancer cases will exceed 3 million with the largest increase occurring in low and middle income countries. Similarly, the Lancet Commission on Prostate Cancer published on April 4, 2024 forecasts a rise in global annual prostate cancer cases from 1.4 million in 2020 to 2.9, yes, from 1.4 to 2.9 million by 2040. So in 20 years, they're going to be a doubling, more than doubling of the cases of prostate cancer with uh, mortality ri rising from... Uh, an estimated three, three, 375,000 to nearly 700,000 in the same period. The increase in cancer diagnosis is not, solely, uh, is not only due to aging population. We know that. Although around 90% of all cancer cases affect people over 50, Younger populations are also seeing rising numbers. That's really scary. A 2023 study covering 204 countries found that cancer diagnosis in individuals under 50 increased from 1.82 million in 1990 to 3.26 million. So from 1.8 to 3.26 million in 2000 and 19 outpacing rises in other age group early onset cancer cases are projected to rise even more by another 31 percent by 2030 while breast cancer is the most common in people under 50 colon prostate and stomach cancers are also increasing in young adults and middle in middle and high income countries many risk factors contribute to the rise in cancer among young individuals including genetic predisposition but genes they don't change in 20 50, 20 30 years uh, uh, so environmental factors including obesity, sedentary lifestyle, unhealthy diets rich in uh, ultra processed food <coughs> and additive and uh, other chemical uh, substances, uh, smoking, uh, the alcohol, excessive alcohol consumption, well not is not only excessive you know, I even small concentration, alcohol intake, alcohol consumption increases the risk of cancer. 
uh, tackling these uh, these all these risk factor requires a, a multi-faceted uh, approach that goes beyond conventional medical treatments and interventions. Firstly, since more than half of global cancer deaths are potentially preventable, according to the uh, World Health Organization and other um, scientific organizations, uh, there is an urgent need to increase awareness and, uh, and intervention for lifestyle changes and el early cancer detection. This includes uh, adequate funding for innovative, preventative, primary health uh, care practices uh, where GP can work with health coaches and nurses and other um, um, professional figures to promote prevention and uh, of course health literacy programs in primary secondary and uh, universities schools and in universities as you know I, I i believe that education is a crucial tool for empowering individuals to make healthier choices and understand the risks associated with uh, certain uh, behaviors and environmental factors secondly better industry regulation against uh, carcinogens is uh, imperative this includes stricter controls on pollutants chemicals and other environmental hazards that contribute to cancer risk governments and regulatory bodies must enforce policies that limit exposure to known uh, carcinogens in workplace, public spaces and homes. The food sector should also play a critical role in cancer prevention, encouraging the production and consumption of nutritious, uh, minimally processed foods can help uh, fight obesity and metabolic hormonal related health issues that increase the cancer risk that are known to increase the cancer risk as I explained in other videos. These can be achieved through policy measures such as subsidies for healthy foods and taxes for unhealthy options and clear labeling to inform consumer choices. Finally, Strong advocacy and collaborative efforts across multiple sectors are needed to drive change. This includes not only health professionals but also governments, the financial sector and uh, other stakeholders. The societal impact of cancer is huge, is vast and addressing it requires a comprehensive and unified response also because as I always told you in my videos and scientific articles <laughs> by fighting cancer with healthy lifestyle you can prevent a range a wide range of chronic diseases that share a common metabolic substrate because coronary heart disease uh, stroke and uh, dementia, fatty liver disease, diabetic nephropathy, hypertensive atherosclerotic base nephropathy, uh, this uh, obesity related cancer including colon, breast, uh, uh, prostate, endometrial, stomach, kidney, esophageal, uh, liver and others uh, uh, and all share a common metabolic substrate uh, that can be uh, 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 manipulated, can, can be altered by healthy lifestyles. Okay.
This is everything for today. This is, uh, as always, Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL, um, the YouTube channel of the science and philosophy of health and longevity. I'm Luigi Fontana, professor of medicine and the scientific director of Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic of the University of Sydney and a clinical academic in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney.